Hello and welcome to the first episode of Culinary Travels, a brand new program which we hope you will find informative and interesting. I'm Chef Robert Harlan and I'll be your host today. We're here at the Negros Museum in the heart of Bacolod City. It's a major tourist attraction. It features fascinating displays tracing the rich history and heritage of Negros. Spanish missions, cane plantations, the development of the sugar industry, including, of course, the role that steam trains, the iron dinosaur, played in that history. And of course, even revolution. Now, if you're wondering what a museum has to do with food, you'll find that out very shortly. But first, let's go into the museum and talk to the museum president, Lynn Gamboa. Let's go. The museum is a very popular destination here for tourists, so give us a little bit of the history. When I first came to Negros in the 60s, the uh, ladies, the older ladies who were involved in culture and arts and everything, kept talking about, we want to build a museum, let's have a museum. So the governor at the time, Governor uh, Bitay Lakson, said to me, Lynn, why don't you put up a museum at the Capitol building, which had been abandoned? So the exhibits you will see here have become smaller because we have less space for the original sized batil that we had as our main exhibit. However, we chose, we opted to have, to tell the story of sugar instead of artifacts, which we don't have really. However, when Governor Joseph Marañón came into office, he asked if he could build another museum for us because he wanted to restore the old Capitol building. And so I said, well, I had no objections because rightfully the Capitol building is the seat of government. And so you are now here in another old building. Now this building is a beautiful neoclassical building, I understand that it was the last example of American colonial style building built by the Americans before the Pacific War, I believe uh, about 1940. But it is a very fitting uh, venue for... Yes, it is. Now, uh, apart from the exhibits that are fixed, you also have regular art shows here? Yes. This museum is a provincial museum. So we encourage, we have changing exhibits for any of the Negros artists particularly who want to exhibit here. Terrific. Lynn, thank you very much indeed for your time today. Thank you. Apart from the fascinating artifacts in the museum, there's another gem here and it's called the Negros Museum Cafe. It's a very special cafe, not like the usual run-of-the-mill cafes that you'll find in museums around the world. This one is run by a Dutch chef, Guido Nason, and his wife Gemma. And it's an exceptional place based on the principle of producing the finest food using the finest local ingredients. And it really is a gastronomic experience. So come with me and we'll talk to Guido and his wife Gemma about their concept of producing the, the menu that they have of locally sourced and very delectable food. Well, here we are in the Museum Cafe with uh, Guido and Gemma Nason, the owners of the cafe, and uh, we're going to have a chat with them about uh, uh, their concept to the way that they've approached um, providing meals that are based on uh, where, where possible organic uh, produce and all natural and uh, they make their own much of their own uh, stuff bacon bread ham uh, cheese cheeses 
sauces and ice cream. So it's really a fantastic concept they have here. But first, let me ask Guido uh, a question. Uh, Guido, you're a Dutchman. Yeah. Your wife's Filipino. Yes. We're here in the Philippines. How come you arrived here in Negros? Long story, but um, in a nutshell, I, uh, uh, I volunteered for a Dutch organization, what's called the PUM. That's a project sending managers to developing countries, and uh, I uh, volunteered for for whatever ten years, and or 2005 to go to the Philippines to Negros. I said never heard, and uh, let's go. You always go alone, so it's an adventure here. So your background was has always been in the uh, hospitality catering area. Yeah, I'm a professional in nutrition, in uh, developing of hospitality industry, in building hospitality industry, and in tourism. So I'm, I, I'm very, uh, yeah, uh, many aspects of uh, the whole tourism and hospitality industry. Now, Gemma, I, I arranged for her a traineeship in Holland, and the Dutch government paid for that. And uh, she went a month to Holland to work in Michelin star restaurants. All the products from this island, oh, you can do thousand and one more dishes with that than, than what's the Filipino kitchen right here, right now. Now, I understand that you don't look at recipes, you invent your own. What do you base most of the uh, dishes on in terms of local produce? The, the pork meat is uh, beautiful here, uh, that still has the nice fat on it. Uh, what's in Western world, they, they, they made pigs who don't get fat anymore. <laughs> it's really uh, unbelievable. But uh, a, a beautiful pig meat, beautiful chickens. Uh, um, I'm, I'm talking then about free range chickens. Huh? Um, yeah, vegetables and, and absolutely the fruits. It's, uh, it's great, absolutely. And Gemma, you are always trying to get the uh, organic produce and get it locally? Yes. Any difficulties in getting it? Uh, in the first time. No, it's okay. We have uh, lots of contact. So the organic, seems to me that the organic movement has made great strides in the last few years. Um, it's uh, developing in a great way. Uh, uh, especially our governor is uh, pushing uh, organic. Marignon is doing very well. He is uh, really uh, with an agricultural background. Very few people make their own cheese. I think you're the only one in uh, Negros yeah. that does it. Why would you make your own and not buy it? Because everything what's not there, I like to make myself. So I'm a, I'm a, the, the nickname of the Dutch is cheese heads. Uh, so what do you want more? And there is goat milk available, there is cow milk available, and there is caramel milk available. So we make cheese. Why not? You can do everything. You give me the product and I make food. But uh, have you never thought of uh, expanding from uh, restaurant business to producing? You know, I came here in 2005 to uh, voluntarily to help up uh, uh, to develop and uh, to do much better in catering industry, in hospitality industry, in tourism and whatever. And I'm still here to teach as much as possible, as much as possible people how to make nice things out of what they produce here. That's, that's just to beef up the local economy. More vegetables, more fruit, uh, drink your own coconut, uh, eat your bago sea salt, your own sea salt, eat your local products, very important. Yeah. Buy in the mountains, then you go to the market. And the last one is the supermarket. A lot of people think if it's imported, it's better than local. No, what important, what's important is worse than what you get from your own soil. Keep the money in the Philippines. Pay your own people around you for producing your food. Nothing else than that. Do you ever get uh, lost for ideas when it comes to inventing new dishes? No problem. Uh, <laughs> ongoing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they yeah. say that if you, if you haven't eaten here in the... Uh, Museum Cafe, you're missing a gastronomic experience. Yeah, you cannot say about yourself, but I think so. Ah, good. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Guido, Gemma, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you.
But before we go into the cafe, let's visit Guido and Gemma at their home in nearby Talisai City. This is where they bake their bread, they make their cheeses, they make sauces, bacon, and they even make their own ham. Guido, the, uh, you make um, fresh bread every day, six days yeah. a week for the uh, museum cafe. Uh, today we're going to look at the French, French baguette, but before you explain how you make it, I understand you make it to a Polish style, which I've not heard before, which is uh, a technique that's been around for well, many, many years, hundreds of years, I believe. Hundreds so of years. So tell me uh, what's the difference between Polish style and regular style? Yeah, now in, in, in this fast world, they want to make bread in a very short part process in a big fabric, as fast as possible. But that's not what we did. What we did for thousands of years already in making bread is do it very slow, time enough, and, and, and let it go in a natural way. So the Polish style is that you ferment the dough for at least six to eight hours. And uh, that, that means that uh, the fibers in there, eh, the, 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 the brown, the, the husk from the, from the wheat, um, and that, that it gets the time to ferment that it, uh, it, it becomes softer, so better to digest, better for the health, and, and the very best, that the, the taste development is much higher than the usual bread. Yeah? Now tell us what the ingredients are for the French baguette. Yeah, this is, uh, these are the best flowers available here on Negros. Um, it's, the, it's the emperor, uh, that's a, a white flower, and this is whole wheat. from San Miguel Mills, um, available in uh, uh, chefs and bakers in Bacalot, you can get that. Now then it's only water, uh, a little honey to get the yeast on, and yeah, we don't have fresh yeast here, so, but very good and, and natural is just uh, the, the, dry, the dry yeast, what is uh, all around available, yeah. So very basic, nothing else than that, and a little salt, the salt is not there. So what's the method, how do you do it? You make the whole dough without, without the, the salt and one-fourth of the flour. And preferable when it's white flour, one-fourth white flour. That's what you keep out. So you get what you see, a very runny, runny dough, what is, what is easily to mix by hand. Um, you start always with the honey, the yeast, and a part of the water a small part of the water. You mix it, it has to be lukewarm the water to get, to get the yeast on, that it starts foaming, that it comes alive again. They're multiplying very fast and you see that it starts foaming. Uh, the yeast what has to raise the bread. So that's the first part. Oh, five minutes. You see it in, in, in minutes, you see it coming up, that it starts foaming. That means it's alive, the yeast is alive and then you can mix it. So that's what you start. And then you mix the flowers, yeah, except one fourth of the flour and the salt, because the salt works, it works against the yeast and the fermenting, so we don't want salt in. And so you mix three fourths of the flour with the water, and yeah, that's it. And this, this was overnight, this is maybe 10 hours. And it's really fermenting, yeah, you see it's bubbling and uh, the fibers are soft and uh, it, it really gets taste. And uh, now then we're gonna mix in we're gonna mix in the last the last flour and the salt.
looks terrific. Uh, this is our Polish style bread, which I must say I'm looking forward to. Uh, okay, now what do you do now? Transfer it to cool it down. It looks terrific. And uh, as Guido said, with the way that you cook it and the time it takes, the method that's been used for hundreds of years, the Polish style, yeah. it should be uh, very, very tasty. It's certainly a lot nicer than. Yes, and certainly a lot nicer than 99.9% .9 of the bread that you buy in the supermarket. That's great. Thank you very much, uh, Grace, for your, for your demo. You know, uh, I believe you're also uh, one of the only people in Negros who makes chutney. Now, Filipinos are not uh, are not familiar with chutney. We Westerners are, of course. Um, what exactly is chutney, and what's it used for? It's originally from India, and I think a few India people here on the island will make their own chutney too. But okay. it's not quite common. Uh, chutney was a side dish with uh, w with curry. Uh, it's uh, very nice uh, with uh, grilled grilled meat. Uh, it's uh, you you can mix it through your salad. You can you can use it uh, uh, in many ways. Grilled fish will do too, and it must extend the taste, the palate, and that's what it do. It it is a very good combination. That's what we always looking for. Huh? The pairing of the meat with the sauce. And these are all local ingredients? Yes, this is, uh, this is all, yeah, only the mustard seed, but you can buy in the, in the India shop there near Riverside, the rest is there. And, and, and I guess in Robinson you find mustard seed too. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, tell yeah. us how okay. you make it. Um, it's, uh, it's quite simple. It's uh, the water and, uh, and the vinegar. The vinegar go in there. Um, then, uh, of course, uh, best is to dissolve the sugar. Yeah, with the sugar and the salt. Uh, that's the first things that it's, uh, it dissolves. And after you see that it's gone, then the other ingredients go there. Uh, that was the salt. Uh, little kulikut, uh, little kulikut. The kulikut is, uh, is actually the same as the chili pepper. Eh? It's, uh, it's chili pepper. Uh, Tabasco is made from kulikut. So uh, don't buy the expensive Tabasco. Just take kulikut, little vinegar, little salt, grind it, put it in a pot and uh, leave it for months and then strain it and you have Tabasco too. It costs very cheap. The garlic and always ginger, huh? Ginger. Grated ginger and the Indian mango, of course. Eh? That's the main ingredient. Okay, we miss one ingredient. That are the mustard seeds. Mustard seeds uh, difficult to open, so we give it a little. That you hear it a little crack. Yeah, just a little, and that's the mustard seeds. Oh, now you see, it's uh, the the mango is nice, soft now, huh? And then the last thing we add, that are the raisins. Huh? Wash very well, wash two, three times. So clean very well. And that go in that last one. Then you need that the raisins, because raisins can contain also bacteria we don't want in there. So this has to be at least 80 degrees again before you switch it off. That you pasteurize again the raisins, the last thing what goes in has to be pasteurized too, um, that you don't have the, the bacteria development, then you can, cannot keep it so long. Right. So right. the pasteurize helps, the acidity helps, the sugar helps, and the salt helps that it can stay long. That are the four preservatives actually.
Tito, you're the only chef I know in Negros who makes his own cheese. You make uh, Carabao cheese, you make uh, cow cheese, and a special interest to me is it's my favorite, you make goat's cheese, which is terrific. And it's great to know that we can go to the uh, uh, museum cafe and buy goat's cheese from you, but tell me how you make it. Yeah, now it's very simple. Uh, we, uh, yeah, you see, uh, we, we, we do big, big amounts. Uh, because out of every 10 liters milk, you make one to two kilos cheese, so you need quite a lot of milk to make cheese. Uh, what's left over is the whey, and the whey is very good for your piggies, or you can drink it when it's cold. Um, but anyway, we, we start with the milk, and uh, uh, there is already some in there, so I just finish it, yeah, make it up till uh, the recipe that's 10 liters. Huh? And um, that's what you bring up, what you bring up till, uh, till 78 degrees, uh, 80 degrees, let's say 80 to so just, keep it simple. Just, just before boiling? You, you don't, yeah, you don't, never boil it, never, never boil, boil it. Uh, because you have to pasteurize huh, when, when there are bacteria on your equipment and whatever. Um, yeah, it's to, to work sure that it's sure good. When you heat up the milk, you have to keep the milk going, that it moves in the pan. So just a little stirring, and with, when it starts to be stagnant, you stir again, that it's ongoing moving while heating up till the 80 degrees. Yeah. We, uh, we use uh, uh, this to measure the temperature. Now, we preheated already the, the, the previous milk. Can you see that? Because I need my binoculars for that. We're going up to 60. Yeah, okay. We're just past 60. We're going up quite slowly. Yeah, okay, now that uh, takes a short while, but let me explain. Um, we make the cheese from this milk and uh, we heat it up till 80. Then the, the, this is cane vinegar, uh, per 10 liters, 350 grams or 350 milliliters cane vinegar. And the vinegar makes that it curdles, <coughs> that the, the milk solids becomes a little more firm and that it split from the watery part of the milk. And then we strain it here in the, in the uh, strainer. You have a, you have a <coughs> yeah, strainer here. We're we going to do a few sh small ones right. to show. And then and cheese cloth for, on top. Yeah, that's the, the big the big. So, stuff, the, the, big so the milk solids stay, stay on in, top yeah. and at the bottom the whey. Yeah, the, the, the whey leaks out, gets strained. So what do you do with the whey then? The way, the way we use later to, uh, to salt the cheese, so we make brine. How much salt? Uh, per, per liter whey, uh, 200 grams salt. Bago sea salt. So what temperature are we up to now? Yeah, let's see, let's see. You see, it's still a little moving, and then you have to move it a little more. Let's see, Opa. And also the, the very hot bottom comes up, and then we can see how much you see that it go fast, huh? It's now 70. Yeah, the official, the official uh, uh, pasteurizing is 73, 76. Uh, depends on 73 for a few 10 minutes. 76, you can switch it off. Uh, but to be sure, and all temperature meters are a little different, be 100% sure, we say 80. Okay, yeah. Now, where did you learn to make the goat's cheese? Yeah, I'm Dutch, so that's not too difficult. <laughs> 80 degrees, we right. switch it off. So now we have the uh, cane vinegar. <clears throat> the cane vinegar go in, and we give it one stir, that one stir, and then we leave it, we leave it to curdle. For 15, look, look, 20 look. minutes. You see, it falls, it falls apart already. Oh yes, already, good heavens. Yeah? Good, I must try that myself. It's very easy. Yes, I can it's see so that. It's so easy. Yes. And you have the recipe now. I do. And you I saw how it works. I see, I've got it from And them. I hope many more people are going to do this here on the island. It should be yeah. very good, very good. Watching the expert. Copy me, copy me, please. Right, okay, yeah. okay. Now the, uh, the milk has curdled thanks yeah. to the uh, cane vinegar and Shara here is going to uh, transfer the milk in, into uh, this conta these containers. It's a double strainer. We have a strainer here, metal one, and we have the cheesecloth. Uh, just to recap, the uh, cheese solids stay at the top and the whey goes to the bottom. 
And I also believe you're going to make some... Yeah, to show that you can do little things and that you can make it a little different with... Uh, you can use bell pepper. I have here uh, green peppers from Conception Pepper Farm, pepper plantation. Uh, you can do it with uh, baked onions in there, you can do Perfect. it with uh, garlic, cheese, uh, fresh herb, cheese, whatever. My mouth is working already. Yeah, I take out, yeah, there's the one. And this is for your, your, your side dish you're going to make, right? Yeah. And the rest becomes a slap plain cheese. And I'm going to make a variation. Yeah, in here were already the green peppers. But anyway, you can use uh, fresh herbs in here. You can use, uh, you can make ginger cheese. Uh, um, yeah, with, with whatever you think. So once you've mixed that up, what do you do with it? Then it go back in the forks and then uh, we have to get rid of the fluid. Huh? Okay, now we can uh, cover that a little and uh, give a little pressure. It depends on what you want. Do you want a soft cheese, what's nice as a spread, then you leave it like this. Uh, you can also put uh, container water, a round container water on top. Uh, it has to go in the fridge and cool down. When you take the round container with water on top, then you give pressure, then the cheese becomes harder. And that's it. Now then it has to go, this small cheese, for at least uh, 12 hours in, uh, in salt water, in the salt. Ah, right, the brine. Yeah, yes, the brine. Right, the brine. That, that salt that gives, uh, that it, you get the crust forming, plus that it gets salted. And the salt is a preservative, so it's quite important. Right, yeah. right. Uh, so cheese without salt, absolutely not in tropical country. It needs, it needs till the right point, saltiness. That's just as preservative. Right, right, Guido. We've now got the uh, the uh, milk solids and the whey separated. What happens now? Yeah, then uh, we're going to close it nicely. This container, we fill it with, completely with water and put it on top. That it gets pressure for 12 hours. That you pressurize it, and then you take the cheese out. You it's just cold. cook up the whey and the salt together? Yeah, to, to get the salt dissolved uh, okay, in the whey. Right, okay. and, then, and then you put that when it's cold in the container and then the slab cheese go in there. Right, right. to, to put it in the brine, brine is water and salt, uh, whey and salt. Uh, in that brine it go for 12 hours and you have to give it a little pressure that it's under the surface of the brine. And then it's for 12 hours and it's for the crust forming that you get the crust. So then uh, after that, that's it? Finished? Yeah, that's finished. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the previous batch, what is we uh, have one, one and a half weeks. We old. have one here and we're going to sample it. Let's look. Yeah, I, 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 my, my niece is here and uh, she is uh, very fond of our cheese too, mm. so we give you a piece you know, this too. This is uh, delicious. Yeah. What do you think? It's good? Excellent. Well, it's good yeah. to know. How good is good? Delicious, numbing, huh? Okay. But it's, it really, it, it's, I mean, it's really re re nice to know that locally we can get cheese this good without having to buy imported. That's yeah, terrific. this is much cheaper, half the price of imported. Just experiment and well, with carabao, cow, goat, everything. I'm, is possible. I'm going to start experimenting. Delicious. Yeah. Thank you very much. Welcome.
Uh, what's this contraption? What have you got yeah, there? Yeah, this is uh, uh, this is known by the butchers around the world as just a, a ham ham uh, container that you give pressure with a ah, few I springs. See, I see. Uh, okay. That's to make ham and to make other cold cuts. That during the process of uh, of cooking, that you keep on the pressure on the product. Otherwise, it, it go open and you cannot slice nice this slices. This looks very mysterious. What is it? Yeah, this is, uh, we call it spiced buckle, buckle of pork belly. Okay, so so this is uh, what uh, you're going to use the, for the chutney. Yeah, that's what we use in the museum right. with the chutney. Because it's the chutney. always a, Yeah, there it is already. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, that's, wow. Uh, wow. that's the bottom. So chutney then is a particularly good accompaniment with any cooked pork. Pork yeah, chops. barbecue, grill, yeah, uh, excellent. But, but also chicken will do. Excellent. Uh, uh, here, this is, uh, this is one whole slab uh, pork belly and we, we, we make a paste with egg white with, uh, with spices and ginger. And uh, the egg white makes that it glued together. And then it goes in the oven for 10 hours. Absolutely delicious. And this is what you Wow. Get. Nice, the filling. You see the rolling. Huh? That's uh, that's uh, our buckle pork belly. And this is uh, obviously local pork. Yeah, this is buckle pork. That's why it's buckle pork belly. It's Fate Farm. Uh, to me, the one very constant in uh, quality and uh, very good taste. Good, excellent, excellent. And we're going to take that to the museum. Yeah, we're going to take that to the museum. Then we make. Thick slice, we grill that, uh, that it's just warmed up, it's done already. Uh, that is just warm and grilled, the grill taste on it, and then with the chutney you eat your fingers. This is lunch. That's lunch. Wow, looking forward to it. Great. Tito, okay. we're going to have the Bacolod pork belly, and you serve it with a, what looks like a very interesting uh, salad, and this is your salad expert here, Alex, who's going to make it. So while he's doing that, maybe you could tell us about the, uh, all the organic ingredients you're using? Yeah, we, um, as much as possible what we can get. Uh, uh, we get uh, the fresh salad and we mix it with some herbs. And that mix, that's called mescloon. Mescloon is a, a salad and the, the herbs, because the herbs are very important for our minerals and all the, all, all the other um, nice vitamins in there. And um, uh, so we use a lot of that. Uh, what do we have? Also, what do we have? Uh, what here? do we have? We have uh, we have uh, fresh green salad. Uh, yeah, we, we we call it actually uh, lamp ears. This kind of salad. Lamp ears. Lamp ears. Okay. Yeah. I can see why. And uh, um, now we have here thyme. That's uh, wild majoran. What we call oregano. We have uh, mint. Uh, this is uh, uh, an Asian Asian oregano. Uh, this is uh, spearmint. Huh? That's the, the, the we call it peppermint, peppermint yes, because it yes. has a peppery peppery taste. Uh, fresh dill, uh, uh, fresh uh, uh, basil, um, the sage, uh, the sage, the parsley, flat parsley, uh, tarragon, and then two other kinds of uh, marjoram for for oregano. So there are many kinds of things. What and, and they're all available in Negro. Ah, this is uh, Buru Buru, this is uh, here in Granada, uh, Alan Ilan, what is it? Uh, so they deliver uh, three times a week. Yeah, we want as fresh as possible. Huh? Yes. Every main course comes with a salad because this salad, our, our proteins, our meat and fish and our brown organic rice, yeah, then it's a whole meal. Everything, all the vitamins, minerals. This is near to your what your daily need on but minerals and vitamins. You're speaking now with a nutritionist hat on. Uh, yeah, is that's uh, something you studied I, I, as I well. Have, I have uh, a few more hats than you think. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, what about dressings? The topping oil for this salad, it's uh, just uh, the the organic uh, the organic pepino. Uh, we have the tomatoes, just tomato. Uh, we prefer red tomatoes uh, because the red has the taste. Uh, um, we make from that, we make uh, the, the tomato salsa. Uh, 
Um, we have the, the, the peppers, uh, sweet and sour, red beetroot, sweet and sour. Uh, we make achara, achara from the, the green papaya uh, with, uh, with uh, just uh, the kalawak. Huh? And then we have the sayoti, and the sayoti, uh, we cook it up with uh, a little cloth in there to give it a little boost. And what okay. dressing do you put we, on the... Yeah, dressing is just virgin olive oil with uh, lime juice, and we just spray a little over it. This is, uh, uh, nutrition-wise, is this uh, uh, very good in vitamins. Vitamin is a mineral bomb. The, the, the lemon, the lime, the, the, the calamansi is always better than vinegar. You know, we have here the delicious looking bacolod pork belly. Alex is slicing it. Yep. And uh, Wang is going to be the one to cook it. Yeah, that's what I do daily. So now, what do, do you. It uh, it's cooked already, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it had already the right kernel temperature, what, 64 degrees in the kernel when it was in the oven. And uh, we just, just give it now the taste uh, from the grilling, the grill taste, uh, um, and, and uh, of course both sides. And that is just warm inside again, but not warmer than 63 degrees, otherwise you kill it again. So you burn it, you yeah. don't want to burn it. No, that's no. Right. yeah, but when you do this out of a raw situation, it takes very long. And uh, you possibly burn it outside while it inside is not yet done. Right, so, right. So to avoid that, you do first the cooking process up till 64 degrees, and then you do a grilling, grilling so, process. So, so the, the, the cooking process up to 64, that's the one that you do in your yeah, kitchen in Feliz. Yeah, in, in that, uh, and now you get the beautiful oh, brown really stripe nice. on yes. it. Uh, then you get the flavors and the, the the effect of uh, burning, burning uh, gives gives special flavor to the meat. That's what we add now, uh, and to give it a little temperature back uh, up till 64 maximum. Uh, when you cook it too long, then it becomes over 64 inside. You dry it out. It, it becomes Fahrenheit, stuck. 64 Celsius. Yeah, not Fahrenheit. No, I, I, sorry, I'm only talking Celsius. Right, yeah. Well, you know, I, people mix them up and it gets a bit confusing from time to time. Is that just about done? Yeah, that's all. That's all. So it's time for, for lunch? Yeah, I'm going to go to lunch. Okay. Oh, and we missed one thing. Okay. Uh, that's a nice French baguette with oh, yes. cheese. And, of course, the, we did a lot of effort to make the, to make chutney. the chutney. So the chutney, that's going to be with this delicious pork belly. Excellent. Excellent. With, now what's the rice under there? Yeah, that's our organic brown rice from Fresh Start.